Joining us on Night School, one of our regulars, Kate and Bradar, checking in from Arcadia. She's been trackside for HRTV at Santa Anita for the Breeders' Cup. Kate, and give us a little bit of your thoughts about the post-position draw. A lot of people were worried whether California Chrome would get stuck inside with that mile and a quarter and a long run to the first turn. Absolutely nothing to worry about now from post-13. No, and, you know, I, I think while sometimes you'd think that being toward the outside is a disadvantage in this respect, I think it's perfect position for California Chrome. Um, interestingly, there's a huge gap in terms of pace uh, between Byron and in post 7 and then where California Chrome ends up in post 13. So I actually think that not only is he going to be clear of any of the problems that have uh, prevented him from maybe running his race, as we saw in the Belmont Six and particularly in the Pennsylvania Derby, but I also think given that uh, Byron with his speed is toward his inside and probably off the break, going to be maybe the only horse to his inside. I really think you might see a stalking, more forwardly placed type of trip, which could be absolutely perfect for California Chrome. It does set up to me on paper as a classic with no real excuses. These horses are fast in the front that will spread the field out a little bit. Uh, you got a long run to the turn and, and talented horses that are all tactical. Nobody seems too pace dependent. No, I agree completely. And, and I also like the fact that the, with Tonalist uh, coming in uh, kind of the last of the classic contenders, the top contenders, so he'll be one of the last to be on the grounds at Santa Anita and completing his preparations at Belmont. He's sort of the wild card. He draws toward the outside post 11. I don't think that matters given his style, but he's another horse that tactically can show a bit more speed if it's necessary. I expect Joel Rosario will take him back a little bit. And, and try to work out the trip. But, you know, I, I just think it has all the makings of the truly classic confrontation because uh, of the scenario. And it'll be interesting to see, too, if between now and post time there's any scratches uh, giving Big Casanova a chance to draw in. That could change things in the complexion of the pace, particularly Marino down on the inside toward post four. Kind of, I thought they might have the worst of it so far as uh, the way the draw shook out. But uh, as you say, I don't feel there really are any real excuses, at least the way it looks right now. Let's run through a couple horses. Just kind of give me a good, bad, or indifferent. You don't really have to get into a lot of detail on it. But some of the other post positions that, that were a little bit uh, eyebrow raising in the dirt mile on Friday, Golden Sense on the rail. Like it? Love it? Hate it? How do you feel about that? Well, you I didn't like it, but it was interesting because in doing the, the draw show with Richard Migliori, whose opinion I respect greatly, he immediately said, that's it, he'll win, he'll air. I mean, he felt very, very confident about it with Golden Sense dropping the inside. So, uh, you know, maybe I'm going to have to rethink it. Uh, but initially, particularly given his uh, victory last year coming uh, toward the outside of the field, I'm giving it some second thoughts. So there's some pause for me there down on the inside. How about in the turf sprint? We've got the extremes, inside and outside. Renee's got Zip has the rail. No Nay Never has the 14. They may be the two fastest in the race, and, and that's a unique horse coming down the hill. Which way do you prefer, inside, outside? Yeah, I'm a fan, especially if a horse has any type of tactical speed at all. I, and I don't mean it has to be on the lead, but I just mean if, if they have a turn of foot, and most of those horses uh, being in the turf sprint do, I look to the outside as being an advantage, and um, I, I I don't like speed horses or horses with tactical speed drawing toward the inside going the six and a half down the hill. I think they have to be fastest of the fast uh, to be able to get that positioning uh, off the bend. And so that reason alone, I, I really feel that uh, No Nay Never has actually got a, an ideal spot. Not that he'll be on the lead, but just that he, from the outside, can work out his own trip and do whatever's necessary. And he's also kind of in a unique position of having traveled overseas and, and run with those horses and then coming back here has that experience. We sort of know where he fits. So I'm, I'm a big fan. I don't know. Favorite. I, I was amazed. I don't know that he's gotten to this point that he is actually looking at favoritism in the turf sprint. And yet uh, the way he draws and the way this race comes together, I, I kind of go with no name ever. If you take a look at the big three in the juvenile, we look there next. You know, a lot of folks have come into the big three prep winners in Lucky Pharaoh and uh, – or American Pharaoh, I should say. And the horses from Kentucky and New York from Todd Pletcher's, those being Carpe Diem, the winner at Keeneland, and then the uh, winner out of New York for Pletcher Daredevil. 
in the draw, Daredevil draws the 12 hole. If you're trying to separate those three, is that enough to uh, uh, make a, a lean to the other two, or are you staying open-minded out of the 12 hole with Daredevil? I, I kind of think it's a bit of a disadvantage for Daredevil. Uh, but that being said, I have to admit that having watched American Pharaoh, Pharaoh and the way he's trained and talked to some of the connections from the Bob Baffert barn, I am now, regardless of post position, really on American Pharaoh's bandwagon. His workout was sensational. I talked to Joe Steiner, who was the former jockey and has been on an awful lot of really good horses. He's worked for Bob for quite a while. And he said this may very well be one of the nicest horses, the nicest horses he has ever sat on. So he said anybody can ride him. He's push button. He's just amazingly talented. And I love the way he's been moving over the ground. In the model of six perfections and some of the good fillies we've seen come run well over the turf course at Santa Anita, Goldacova, of course. I know you've got your eye on another filly that you've seen and you've spotted and you like what you see coming up in the mile. You know, Vita was a horse I was looking at initially in the filly and mare turf, and I thought she was a top contender there. So when her connections opted, Elaine de Royal Dupree has her in the mile, and she draws a you know, I think a, a decent post position there that she she ended up uh, really moving up in my estimation in a position that I hadn't even expected her to be. And she draws post three. Uh, Sumion will be aboard. And I saw her train as well on her first day on the Santa Anita track. Just a light maintenance type of, you know, easy, easy leg stretching type of uh, uh, gallop, little jog and gallop with a whole crew of the European horses, but it was a unique situation because you really got to get a first impression, and you also got to compare her to uh, a lot of her other European counterparts, and she is huge. She just has a way about her. She's not the prettiest mover on the dirt, but she doesn't have to be, and given her record at the mile and what she's already accomplished, I'm really thinking she's going to be a contender. I uh, love what I've seen so far for Vita. Historically, those Phillies have done better than the boys in the mile from the Europeans coming in. Kate and Bradar will be on all the HRTV coverage leading up through the Breeders' Cup, and she'll also be on our Horse Player Now Buzz Report with all of her picks and analysis. Thanks for your time, Kate. Hey, Jeremy, I almost forgot, too. I've got to get the – this is the house horse mentioned, but the, the draw for the sprint, um, it's been differing opinions on work all week. Um, Florent Giroux, who my husband represents – will be aboard, and I love him. He's in post 13 toward the outside, just to the outside of Fast Diana. And in talking to uh, Florent as well as Doug, uh, we all feel like that's an ideal position for a very fast horse to be able to, to dictate what happens to the outside. So um, we're the house, the Brader household has worked all week all the way. <laughs> if work all week wins, there won't be a full bottle of wine in all of Arcadia. So enjoy it and have a great time out there. <laughs> You guys, drink it all in. This is a great, great time.